There is an ancient saying. A student asks his teacher a question, teacher, when is the best time to plant a tree? The teacher responds, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. The student continues, but if I plant a tree today, you will not be here to eat of its fruit. The teacher replies, the point of sowing seeds is not to taste its fruit, but to let future generations know that you were on their minds. A hundred and 70,000 young people are experiencing loss after 2020. The number skyrockets to 300,000 when you add not just the loss of loved one, but the loss of a friend. This number is 16 to 20% higher than the year before. The amount of grief and pain that young people are carrying in their backpacks every single day to school is staggering. So when someone tells you, sports, that's not a ministry, <laughs> it's just a game, you tell them. You tell them that the surf team in Oceanside would disagree that the same way that they ride over the ocean, they are learning to wave goodbye to depression as they trust God. Tell them about the football team and Carlsbad and Escondido, how they learn to put on their pads and at the same time learn to trust the full armor of God. They learn their cleats will hold them steady in tough seasons and in the same way with feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, they will stand against the wiles of the enemy. You tell them that sports gives ministers of the gospel proximity with the future, the ability to pour into those who are coming. I ask you, what greater act of faith is there than sowing a seed? The idea of trusting something to the earth Trusting that the elements and its gardener will make sure that its destiny comes forward. I ask you that sowing seeds is literally sowing into the life of a young person. Have you ever considered that the greatest thing that Moses ever did for the people of God was not ten plagues and water walls? No. It was Joshua, the one who came behind him. And what of Paul? the writer of 14 books of the Bible. I submit to you that the greatest thing that Paul ever gave us was Timothy. We have an opportunity to consider those beyond us, to honor the past of the church by guaranteeing its future, by sowing seeds so that the places that people have considered dry and barren but we could literally send people full of the water of life to take it to those kids who feel lost and alone. I promise you somewhere in this city, there is a young David who feels forgotten, who feels lost in the family business and culture and feels that even his father does not believe in him. Somewhere in this city, there is a woman at a well stuck in cycles. So very thirsty and what a privilege to be a brick in the kingdom of God to send willing workers to places where folks are dry and alone to know that I had a hand in making sure that someone full of the Holy Ghost came and found that David and know and isn't it amazing how my seed can become a rock in the pocket of a David to help him defeat every Goliath in his life isn't it awesome how your seed could make sure that some young lady has a wonderful conversation with her female coach drinking Gatorade and somehow she is transformed because she drank way more than what she thought. I've seen it. 
When young people are sparked with life because someone else gave of theirs, it turns your heart into a sprinkler system and everyone around you can't be dry anymore. The Holy Spirit has a way of working through the hearts of people to make sure that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. But isn't it true that God does a whole lot with a little? I urge you to consider Jesus standing in front of 5,000 who just finished getting the word, but now they are hungry. He turns to his apostles and says, feed them. Their first response, we don't have enough. Jesus replies, but I am here. And what a marvelous miracle God can do with a young man's Lunchable. (laughs) It seems that two fish and five loaves in the hands of a masterful master chef is somehow more than enough. The apostles had 12 loaves left over. What if tonight God is asking for the Lunchable in your heart? For you to be willing to give to make sure that others can eat. That yes, they've been around him and they've heard the lessons, but they need to see the miracle. They need to know what God can do with a little. I was a lying, stealing, stuttering kid until one football coach said, maybe there's more for you. He intervened and intercepted my life in a way I just knew that I was going to be caught by the wrong receiver. But God made sure that I got in the right huddle, taught me how to pray until he touched down in my heart. And every day I've been getting first downs ever since. I'm saying that God has a plan for every soul in this room. When you were in your mother's womb, he knew even you before you drew breath. He even knew Drew Brees. I'm saying But maybe the Drew Breezes in our city should not be as rare as they are. Maybe they are waiting for someone to believe in them enough to sacrifice of themselves. If they are waiting for someone to care enough to send willing workers to their part of the city, I promise God is doing something in the city and you have the chance to invest into the future of the kingdom of God. They asked, when is the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. But the second best time to believe in young people, the second best time to transform your city The second best time to sow seeds that become rocks in the hands of Davids, that become water in the hands of young women trapped in cycles is now. And some of us may never taste of its fruit, but think of the shade that you will give generations that are not even here yet. And they will learn that even I too must sow a seed. That the goal of Christianity is not comfort, but to be canopy for a generation that is to come. The harvest is plentiful. And the workers, they are few. But when it comes to God, It's more than enough. The question is, what are we really willing to do? Thank you.